I was listening to the rapper Roddy Rich and heard this profound message in one of his songs. Time is the most expensive luxury in the world. It's something you spend and never get back, but you never know how much you have left. The masses are taught to believe that fiat money, real estate, gold, and crypto are assets. But none of these things matter when you don't have time. You don't worry about them on your deathbed. Yet most people run around as if they had all the time in the world. If you live to 80 years old, you would have almost 30,000 days to experience life. However, most people don't experience much of those days. They don't travel the world, create something meaningful, have amazing experiences with their families. Their days are the same, a gray blur, dictated by parents, bosses, societal programming, and someone else's agenda. Each day ticking away. This doesn't have to be you. You can win back your time by mastering a few frameworks. The following mental models will help you become free. Our world is not linear. Asymmetry is the normal condition. In many cases, very few things really matter. Those things that do matter create substantial results. Over a hundred years ago, economist Alfredo Pareto discovered this pattern in observing the wealth distribution in Italy. He discovered that over 80% of Italy's wealth belonged to less than 20% of the population. The pattern was fractal and kept repeating in different areas of life. In business, you might find that 20% of your workers create 80% of the results. In the world, 80% of the crime is done by less than 20% of the criminals. Taking this to its logical conclusion, 80% of your personal results come from less than 20% of your efforts. As of August 2022, my YouTube channel has accumulated 7 million views. I have over 400 videos, but my top five have over 4 million views, more than half the channel's views. If I were to optimize for views, I would study the top performing videos and replicate what worked. Same pattern happens in most areas of life. Most of your energy is wasted. More work does not equal more results. Look for the few things you're currently doing which are producing exceptional results. It's not about being more productive, but being more effective. Cut out the time wasters, low impact activities without remorse. This will win back your time. Let's say you pay $5 to stream a movie. 20 minutes into the movie and you are bored to tears. Should you keep watching the movie? You did pay $5 for it, after all. I am never going to financially recover from this. Most people will continue watching due to the sunken cost fallacy. A better idea is to abandon the movie and use your time to do something else. Watching the boring movie will not only rob you of $5, but also rob you of an opportunity. The opportunity of doing something better with your time. Don't be afraid to abandon plans to chase better opportunities, especially if the plan is no longer working. Our world is abundant and there are many ways to get what you want. This was the mental model I used to make the decision to drop out of my engineering degree despite already finishing all the subjects. Abandoning engineering altogether was the only way I could chase entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is a better leverage vehicle than engineering. The engineers who make the big bucks must work their way up a corporate ladder or own an engineering business. Elon Musk is an engineer, but it was his entrepreneurship ventures that made him the richest man in the world. There were better opportunities for me. Look at your life. Ruthlessly cut out the slack. Remove time wasters and focus on better things. Naval Ravikant has insightful words about this. So I, I picked an hourly rate for myself and I said, I'm never going to squander my time for less than this. So if, if originally it was 500 bucks an hour, then I upgrade to 5,000 bucks an hour and you know, pick an aspirational hourly rate. Figure out your hourly rate and outsource activities that fall below this rate. If you can make $100 per hour from your work, it doesn't make sense to spend three hours mowing your lawn. Pay the lawn guy his $80 and use that time to do better things. Play ball with your son. Good. Because a man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man.
work on building a new stream of income, anything but the mundane. For digital things, I like to use websites such as Upwork and Fiverr. I get freelancers to do all the stuff I don't want to do. Got some boring data to put in a spreadsheet? Why do it yourself when you can pay $25 to some math prodigy kid in Korea to do it? It's not racist, it's just true. Actually, my name's Jung. And I do speak English. Got to make a logo for your business? Why do it yourself when you can get a graphics design girl from San Francisco to do it? Memento mori means remember you must die. It's a Latin saying favored by Stoic philosophers. Memento mori is a mantra, a phrase you repeat to yourself. You remind yourself of death not because you are a morbid goth. You remind yourself of death because it's the only way to appreciate life. When you truly accept your morality, you don't get caught up in the bullshit. You allow others to get caught up in the drama and gossip, but you focus on your goals. Others can get programmed by the socially conditioned machine. You, my friend, will control what enters your inner matrix. All wise men and women accept death. It allows them to wake up and get out of the hypnotic trance. If people really understood how finite their time on Earth was, it's called anime, and it's an art form. They wouldn't just go with the flow of mediocrity. They wouldn't live like rats inside a cubicle. Ever noticed how people tend to spontaneously change in old age or after a rush with death? Morality becomes real to them and it reorients their lives. Robert Greene's The 50th Law is one of my favorite books. Here is what he had to say about confronting your morality in the final chapter. In the face of our inevitable morality, we can do one of two things. We can attempt to avoid the thought at all costs, clinging to the illusion that we have all the time in the world, or we can confront this reality and accept and even embrace it. Use the frameworks. I don't want you to feel anxiety from the things that we have discussed. You don't have to live in fear thinking about the countdown timer that's leading to your death. This has been to give you a sense of awareness and the right tools to ensure that you live well here on Earth. If these words resonate with you, you're clearly different from most people. To have the life you want, you'll have to approach things in a unique way. Focusing on leverage points with the 80-20 rule. Making decisions based on opportunity cost and saying to yourself, memento mori. These things are not normal. They're strange, but they will lead you to living and dying well.